Coming up today on Houston Life, Houston designer Chastity Surreal is chatting all about making it to the series finale of Bravo's Project Runway and heading to New York Fashion Week. Then we'll meet award-winning writer and television director Malcolm Dwayne Carter and learn more about his new web series, The Season. Plus, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. How to make it memorable with a perfect red wine and chocolate pairing that's surprisingly affordable. And the popular Tapas on the Trails event is happening next weekend. Details on how you can enjoy the Houston Arboretum while having delicious bites and perfectly paired wine and beer. Lauren, you need some wine and beer. All that today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life, February 2nd, 2022, also known as 2 2 2022. Yeah. A lot of twos. Seems lucky. Yeah. Also lucky that Christine Noel is in today for Courtney. Thanks for joining us yeah, once again. I'm super happy to be here and sending all my love to Courtney. Come back soon, my dear. I know, yeah. I know. She's just she's feeling good. She's just waiting for that negative yeah. test. So she'll be back any day now. I feel like I have not seen you in a long time. Christine. I feel like it's been, no, it's been a hot minute. Was it last week you were here yeah, on the desk? Yeah, it was desk? last week. And then last weekend you came over to our house. How late did you and your husband stay? I don't know. I know when we got home, I was like, oh boy. It was 3 a.m. <laughs> it was 3 a.m. I don't know how we you We had a lot said. to catch up on. We did. I think it had been since the wedding in September, my wedding in September, that we actually had a chance to really catch up. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's rare to have friends, like, when the hours just go by. So I yes. appreciate having you in it my life. It was great to we see you We love having guys. you here yeah. in Houston Life. So happy Groundhog Day. And uh, we also, we, we know of Puxatawney Phil, right? right? Of course. But yeah. we have our own version here in Texas. In case you missed it, did you know Texas has its own own day, not Groundhog Day, Armadillo Day. Zach Lajway introduced us to Bee Cave Bob mm -hmm. earlier. In case you missed it, I believe we have some footage. Check out this adorable Armadillo. I know. Look at Bee Cave Bob. So, so cute. So here's the thing. I was just texting Zach to see if he had an update on this story. We're not quite sure if there is an update, whether Armadillo Bob Saw is going to or predict not. whether winter will, will stick around or spring will come soon. I know. I love that we have this, though. I mean, it's so Texas, and we have an armadillo, and I know Zach asked him, like, hey, do you think that uh, armadillo Bob and, and Puxitani Phil would be friends? And he's like, no, like, we don't like rodents. Oh, dear. So, <laughs> seriously, oh, dear. that's not a friendship in the making there. I mean, if there's one thing we are in Texas, we're honest, right? Yes. Well, so stay tuned to clicktohouston.com because at any moment that prediction will hopefully yeah. come on down. Okay, so Khloe Kardashian, you may have heard about this viral chicken feet hands photo. Uh -huh. There she is, you know, and she's talked very publicly about people criticizing the way she looks. Yes. She's, she's been in the news. Uh, we, I believe we have the photo that went viral because a lot of people were saying after she shared this photo, I mean, she looks fantastic, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. But people are focusing in on her hands and her mm -hmm. fingers saying that they look like chicken feet. Yeah. And it almost looks like we were wondering, may, I think maybe there's just like a shadow that's being cast on her. See how there's a shadow on her on her boots? It looks like a purse behind yeah, her. Yeah. Those are her boots. So that's, a, that's the sun shining, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are saying it's just a shadow on her hand. Maybe the photo was filtered to make her face look better, but they didn't look at her hands. Look, because you can see the fingertips, they yeah. look skin color. I mean, honestly, do we have to, do we have to pick people apart like that? Yeah. You know, I seriously feel like, hey, listen, she's got her nails done. Like women, ladies, if you're out there, I know if you have your manicure or your nails are done, like you're winning. Yeah. Like we're doing the best we can, <laughs> yeah. right? And she, I just feel like there's always so much scrutiny. Yeah, there and it's is. Like, listen, she looks great. Yeah, Whatever. she's a good sport, too. Yeah. I mean, she is so chill and down to earth, but I, all the comments, I, I'm sure it's got to get to her. Yeah. Plus, her ex in the paternity scandal, and yeah. then, you know, her ex cozying up to a mystery woman. So she posted that after all that happened. Let's give her a break. Let's be yeah. nice to Chloe. I agree. Okay, so our producers, Christine, they thought it would be fun to play a game called Getting Handsy. Okay. So what's going to happen is a picture of hands will pop up on the screen. You and I will have to guess which a celebrity those hands are attached to. Okay. Okay. And I'm I think we have some, some bells. There's one okay. for you. Oh. Now, the first person to ring in has the chance to, to respond to the okay. question. Okay. We ready for this? Okay. Oh, ter you were first, Christine. Mickey Mouse? I'm, yo, oh, good wow. job. Okay. Good job. Okay. <laughs> ready for the next one? 
Oh, okay, this is a tricky, this is a tricky one. Is it like Mike, Michael Jordan? <laughs> How are we supposed to know? I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, let's just reveal the... Oh, Shaquille oh, O'Neal. Okay, I mean, you know. Okay, that was kind of tricky. I figured it was a basketball we... player. I rang in first. Edward Scissorhands, right? There I we go. I would hope so. Okay. Um, the Hulk? Okay. Yes. Good job. There we go. Gosh, I thought that was going to be me for a second. Uh, is that Spock? Man, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. The, the OG Spock, huh? Okay, we still going on this? I think maybe that was it. Did we tie? I think it was a tie. Okay. Go team. All right. I'll Good take job. It. Well, it's fun having you here. Well, still to come on Houston Life, from edible underwear to handcuffs <laughs> made of fur, hmm, we're going to break down some of the worst Valentine's Day gifts ever. Oh, I can't wait to talk more about this. And for now, though, we want to check in with Lauren Kelly, who has a pretty tasty assignment this afternoon. Hey, Lauren. It looks like we're still working on yes. getting her shot, hey, but guys. there she is. Hey, we are here. We're here. I promise we're here. We're here at the Arboretum, and it is getting gear it up for next weekend's big event. It's the top us on the trails, and Christine Mansfield is going to tell us all about it when Houston Life returns. Okay, so don't go anywhere, because we're right here. Houston Life is coming back in just two minutes. Okay, so on this 2-2-2022, two, two, February 2nd, yeah. Valentine's Day, the realization it's right around the corner. Less than two weeks at this point. Have you picked up uh, your gift for your husband, Jesse? No, not, not so much. Yet. And I haven't even thought about it, right? I know. So <laughs> we were chatting about some of the worst Valentine's Day gifts Ooh. ever. And this is a study conducted by one poll. So 2,000 Americans in relationships, they were asked about the top terrible gifts uh, that they were sort of just dis disappointed to receive. Any guesses, Christine, what took the top spot? I'm sure it's probably something super cliche like heart-shaped candy chocolate? or chocolate. Or... I like a heart-shaped chocolate. What's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah, I just think that some people are like, is that the best you can do? Like, try to be more original. Well, you know what? Ding, ding. That's right? one of the things that's on the list. I, I don't know what's wrong with a heart-shaped box of chocolates. That seems lovely. Apparently, people don't like furry handcuffs, <laughs> flowers. I mean... Is this the worst list, or are these all the things I love? Seriously. Champagne. I, I think, I think. Lingerie. <laughs> a funny card. I would love a funny card. These are all great. But listen, I think that it's not a one-size-fits-all when it comes to Valentine's Day, and this list is like you're trying to sometimes force it on your partner. Yeah. Listen, if your partner doesn't want furry handcuffs, like you better know before you show up with that because that, that could be a deal breaker. If they don't want furry handcuffs, they're boring. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, maybe it's because people want more originality, yeah. more creativity. Yeah. You were saying that in college you dated a guy who got you a giant poster. It was a photo of the two of you together. The thing was is that <laughs> I was ready to break it off and I was like, what am I going to do with a poster size? <laughs> do you know what's funny about what you're saying? Like at so least there was some thought put into it, right? A quarter of people say that after Valentine's Day and after getting a bad gift, it's crossed their mind to, to dump their spouse. Well, it wasn't, that wasn't the reason why. It was very early on and it wasn't very serious. You knew it wasn't going anywhere, <laughs> but he seems to <laughs> like put you on the jumbotron at the game. In love. Yes. So in high school, did you, did we used to a, did do... Did you have a bad gift ever? Well, we did candy grams in high school okay. where you could pay a few bucks to send someone a candy gram, but then in the middle of their class... I know our producer, Kat, is tilting her head like, what? It happened. So someone would come into your classroom and they would interrupt your, like, English class oh, yeah. or whatever it was, yeah. and you would have to stand up while they sang to you. It was the worst. It was honestly worst. Uh, you know what? We it actually so had awkward. that in my school, too. Really? Yes. Wasn't now it that terrible? Thinking, yes. You're I, like, I oh, never would have so sent it awkward. to people I liked, but I mean, more, more of a joke? I don't know. I don't know. Let's bring in Joe with our question of the day. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, we want to hear from you. What's the worst Valentine's Day gift you've ever received? And we already have those answers coming in. Let's take a look right now. Kathleen writes in a half-dead plant with the clearance tag still on it. And my ex-boyfriend at the time left a note saying he was at the bar with a friend at the time who got dumped. So I guess he just handed the plant on over to him and Aww. said, hey, give this to your girlfriend. Karen writes in a silk rose so I could bring it out next year and the years to come. Oh, it's like love that lasts yes, forever. Lasts forever. <laughs> next we have Linda writing in, nothing at all. 
and I'm okay with that as I know I'm loved the other 364 days yes, a Linda. year as well. That's a sweet one right there. <laughs> we want you guys to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page, join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in this show. Of course, these are some great comments coming in. I like the Silk Rose. You can give it over and you can re-gift it too. That's what I am. I'm a big re-gifter. Okay. So I get it. I can give it to someone else. What What about you? <laughs> Did you ever get a bad or a gift that you uh, disappointed by on Valentine's Day? Well, I've never been in love. So I never got a Valentine's Day gift. What? <laughs> At okay, all. Well, I know. usually buy myself gifts. So I'll get a box of chocolates for myself and, and then I'll act surprised like, oh my God, who's my secret admirer? It's myself. I'm but going on Amazon pretend. right now. I'm going to get some silk roses for you this oh, year. Oh, please give them on in. <laughs> With a heart. <laughs> yes. there you so you go. feel some love. I feel special no, I like, already. I like Linda's comment. Like 364 days, the mm -hmm. other days of the year, you know, feeling loved. I think that's what it's really all about. It's true. Yeah, it's you true. Know? Okay, well, thank you, Joe. No problem. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for their comments. So here's something that I think could be a really great gift. You know, people talk about instead of giving stuff, how about just doing an experience yeah. together, trying something new together? Absolutely. Okay, well, mark your calendars for this one. The Houston Arboretum and Nature Center. This year, they're returning, Christine, with their special Valentine's-themed outdoor party. It's called Tapas on the Trails. It all happens next Saturday. Yeah, it's actually one of their most popular events, and it's also a great alternative to, say, just going to a restaurant. Yeah. And Lauren Kelly is hanging out at the Arboretum this afternoon with more information on this. Hey, Lauren. You guys, how much better does my red Valentine's Day themed sweater stand out in the forest than in a restaurant? This is where you should be. Grab your Galentines, maybe your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your best friends. Top is on the trail happening here at the Houston Arboretum is next Saturday, like you guys said, and it's one of the most popular events. And here with all the details is one of the greatest friends of Houston life, Christine Mansfield. We've been chatting about this event. We're so happy it's back this year and it's happening next weekend. Tell our viewers all about it. Yes. So we're very, very excited about it. It's going to be out in nature and it's looking like it's going to be great weather, which is wonderful. It's Saturday night and we have tickets left so people can go online to our website to get tickets, but it's five awesome Mediterranean dishes throughout the trails. You get to walk around, enjoy some beverages with your food and just hang out with your friends. What I love about this is as the sun goes down, like when the trails are beautifully dimly lit, it makes for such a romantic scene. It's just a perfect thing to do ahead of Valentine's Day. It's really gorgeous and a lot of people don't don't get to see this place at night. So you know you get to come out here during the day, but this is a really special opportunity to come out here when it is, like you said, nicely lit and you can have, you know, just enjoy your food and beverages with your friends and hang out on the trails. It's definitely. So well, tickets are definitely going fast because this is the most popular event. HoustonLife.tv for a link right there. But I also want to mention that you guys have a great mission. Like a lot of the proceeds go back to a very special cause. They do. All of the proceeds from this go back to our mission of conservation and education. And that's what we're doing out here every day. So, you know, trying to make sure that this beautiful space is available to people and that kids and adults can learn more about it. I just lo look at this. The leaves are falling as we're out here. It feels like it's fall but it's winter, but it's beautiful. Christine, thanks for the info. Hey, you guys, coming up a little bit later on the show, we're going to take a look at that delicious Mediterranean-themed menu and the food that's going to be out here at Tapas on the Trails next weekend. So, Christine and Derek, back to you guys in studio yeah. for now. It really is a beautiful event, Lauren. I'm so glad you reminded us about it. And the Arboretum, it's right there inside the loop. So Love it. Yeah, Lauren, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and speaking of thank yous, thank you, Christine Noel, one of the busiest people in the building, and you always make time to come see us oh here. My Gosh, it's always such an honor to be invited. Always such a good time. So thanks for having me. Good. Well, I'm going to save some wine and chocolates for you. Perfect. Just in case. I know. You... Wine Club Wednesday. I'm always <laughs> sitting in the other studio going like, hey, can we come over and join in on the fun? <laughs> the answer is always no to that. But maybe this weekend <laughs> maybe this you can week. join. Thanks again. Yes, we'll see you on the news me. at 4 o'clock. Okay, let's send things on over to Mr. Joe Sam, who has more on two local artists making it big. Hey, Joe. Hey, Derek. That's right. After the break, local writer and TV director Malcolm Dwayne Carter is giving us a scoop on his new web series, The Season, and what to expect from the new episode. And later, we'll chat with Houston designer in the running for the winning title of Bravo's Project Runway. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. A new online show called The Season is becoming very popular after being released by a local award-winning writer and television director, Malcolm Dwayne Carter. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month, we wanted to spotlight Malcolm's accomplishments with this amazing web drama that's now opening doors for a lot of black local actors. Burnt us all. 
for those investors were pissed. Not as pissed as I was when I couldn't find him to get that money back. Tell me a little bit about the production that we're seeing here because the first episode is already out and I know a lot of people are excited about it. Well, my character's name is, uh, is Avers. Uh, Avers Perry is um, the brother of the, the lead, uh, Roman Perry. He's <laughs> he's a tough, great character. I'm just gonna say that. Studied a lot of actors, you know, and adapted what I got from them over the years and kind of interpreted into Avers. And I love the fact that, that Malcolm put that type of, you know, sinister type effect on this character to where it, exactly in this in this episode, King Average, you're gonna kind of decide the audience, you know, if he's a good guy or a bad guy. What is it that motivates you to keep going? Because we see a lot of people that experience failure within this industry. What is it that keeps you going? Literally almost everything, you know, my friends, my family, but just wanting to definitely not be a stereotype. I want to change and change the perspective, but also change the face of television. Back in like 2020, um, a, a lot of events was happening with me and my team to where, you know, a lot of people that was supposedly wanting to be in the industry were using and abusing us in a way to where it was just being very ugly. You know, we were kicked out of our building and that's when we came over to the new building and we found this establishment so we had to rebuild build after just losing almost entirely everything so the reason why it was called the season because we was going through the roughest season that we never thought we would ever go through so that just sparked the entire title and then just came about with the creation of it yeah Hello. What's, what's the budget of the film? Why right? does that matter? What's the budget and of the film? And nobody cares that you signed a client. When the last time you signed what one? What does that matter? Hello. One, you're going to see a lot of excellence. And then you're going to see the luxury niche that you never see on television, the way that it should be normalized. We're going to see these characters go through their ups and downs, uh, family, drama. But you're also going to be seeing how exactly in this new particular project, you will reap what you sow. Whenever you do somebody wrong, it comes back and bites you twice as much. We've been speaking this to existence for a while. and. Uh, uh, really, we just had to start practicing what we preach instead of waiting for people to, to to come down and try to see the talent. Just like we're doing, we're, we're, we're ex, uh, exposing that talent. And it's really good to see for the talent the people out here in Houston, let them know, hey, you don't have to travel outside of Houston to be in a quality production. We're doing it right here in our backyard. Now, the season is currently on a film festival run and airs new episodes on Fridays. To learn how you can watch the series, I'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now, let's send things over to Derek, who's highlighting a very important health topic. Hey, Derek. Okay, Joe, thanks for that. February is American Heart Month. It's an opportunity to shine a spotlight on heart health. And today, we're sharing a story of triumph and hope, the story of baby Lincoln Tiemann, who at just days old underwent his first open heart surgery. Here with more on his story is Dr. Avichal Agarwal, pediatric cardiologist with UT Physicians, along with Amy and Chris, Lincoln's parents. Welcome to all of you. <laughs> and it looks like Lincoln is, uh, he has a lot to say. Doctor, we're gonna get to you in just a moment. Um, first of all, let's talk about the condition uh, to Amy and Chris. What was Lincoln actually diagnosed with? Lincoln was actually diagnosed with a severe heart condition called hypoplastic heart syndrome. Uh, it is a condition where what we call it is half born with half of the heart. His left side of the heart did not develop very well. So instead of having four valves, he only had two valves and his uh, left side of the heart was very small uh, and was not able to sustain blood flow. And Chris and Amy, when you heard this news, when you first heard this diagnosis, I mean, I, I can imagine how scary that must have been. Yeah, it was it was hard to um, accept, and um, we didn't know what we didn't know what our journey was going to. We didn't know what the journey was going to be like. We didn't know the outcome, but we had a lot of people that prayed for us, and um, but getting him at ten today is doing really well. Well, we can see he's. Uh... He's doing very well, I understand. There have been a lot of milestones. Despite spending month, month after month in the hospital, uh, I understand that this very last Christmas was the first time Lincoln was able to actually come home and spend Christmas with the family. Yes, yes. These photos are incredible. I mean, he, he's clearly such a trooper. Dr. Agarwal, let's talk about uh, what happened after this diagnosis took place. Essentially, how was Lincoln treated for this condition? He was assigned a whole heart health team. 
he was yeah so the biggest challenge with him was that his heart was he was only born with half of the heart and the uh, he was only born with the right side and the right side of the heart was not functioning very well his heart was basically functioning at the at less than 10% of its capacity and uh, he had to spend multiple months in the icu cardiac icu to be able to uh, sustain life and he was on multiple iv medications we have to watch him very closely he was not able to feed he was not able to tolerate feeds and was losing weight and was to a point where he was less than his birth weight uh, at one point and uh, was deep to sick to we would have a heart transplant so we all prayed very hard for him worked very hard and his family was always there an amazing family and he was a fighter and he pulled through with amazing colors and and now that he's 16 months old and is doing really really well it, it this story just sort of underscores how having expert care is so critical in a situation like this when parents like Chris and Amy doctor they get this news that is potentially life changing how can you set up a patient for success to ensure the best possible outcome essentially so uh, once once we once we diagnose any child with hypoplastic left heart syndrome we have to really explain to the family the outcomes actually these days are not so bad um, but these babies have lots of complications, lots of uh, uh, issues over time, and uh, and they're very challenging. So we have to really uh, explain to the family and, and work very hard with these babies. Every single baby has, has their own different challenges, and so we have to uh, organize a, a specific plan for every, every single baby to be able to uh, maintain flow to their or, uh, vital organs. And Chris and Amy, let's talk a little bit more about how Lincoln is doing today because clearly he's quite active. Uh, I take it he has quite a bit of energy and he's he's crawling. Yes, yeah, he's crawling. He's getting into a lot of things. Um, we are actually finally on the growth chart now. Um, we have also started forward speeds with his um, his feeding pump and handling those well. Um, but yeah, he is hitting a lot of milestones, um, and, and just we just had a checkup last week, and he's doing really great at the moment. Well, that's incredibly good news, and I, I can imagine what a relief that is after such scary news that you had when you were pregnant. To see him come so far must be so satisfying. So, Chris, Amy, baby Lincoln, Dr. Agarwal, thanks to all four of you for your time, and best of luck in the future. If you would like more information, you can visit utphysicians.com or call 888-4-UT-DOCS. That's 888-488-3627. Switching gears now, coming up, a very special guest will join us for Wine Club Wednesday. We've got some inexpensive and delicious recommendations ahead of Valentine's Day. We'll also be getting a check of what's coming up for the news at 4 o'clock, including what you need to know about the cold snap that's headed our way. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life here, Derek Shore at 3.29 p.m. Thanks so much for joining us. So at the top of today's show, we were talking about Groundhog Day, Puxatani Phil, and here in Texas, we have Bee Cave Bob, the armadillo. Well, the update to the story is he saw his shadow, and you know what that means, six more weeks of winter. Come on, BK Bob. Here he comes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there's no stopping him now. <laughs> There is no stopping him now. What a cutie, Bob the Armadillo. So uh, there you have it, six more weeks of winter. And uh, before we get the forecast, speaking of cold weather, let's get to more of your responses to our question of the day. Earlier we asked, what is the worst Valentine's Day gift you ever received? Carol writes in, when my husband got me the same gift basket as he got his daughter. <laughs> okay, Carol, you gotta let us know what's in it. Very, very curious about that. Darcy writes, it wasn't the worst, but we read V-Day cards to each other in Walmart and then put them back. Oh, well, that is a good money-saving tip, Darcy. Very nice. Also memorable. Jody writes in, taking me out to dinner on Valentine's Day without a reservation. 
Oh yeah, spent hours in the car and ended up at a drive through Listen, Jody, especially here in Houston, it is so tough to get a table. So uh, the reservation, that's a great reminder. Can never be too early. Now let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what's coming up on the news. <laughs> oh, oh, walk. We've all been there, you know. Yeah. I promise I made a reservation and no, no, Mr. Short, never heard yeah. of you. Yeah, <laughs> especially, I mean, like even on a Tuesday here in Houston, you got to make reservations if you want to get into someplace yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Good, point, good point. Yeah. I got to tell you my funny Valentine's. Please. Yes. Yes. High school, I've been high school, yes. senior in high school, and I went out with the same gal for two or three years in high school, right? Uh -huh. And so she made me a Valentine's Day cake. Bless her heart. A yeah. cake? A cake. She made wow. me a cake. A and, and it was all nice and pink. And in red hots, she brought it over. My mom's there. And, and, and in red hots, it said, Happy VD. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different uh, kind of. That's a whole different yeah. kind of cake. Yeah. <laughs> that was short wow. for Valentine's Day. And mom was like, what does this say? Oh, She's like, she what have you been, two been doing? <laughs> that was funny. That's we, good. No, we laughed oh. about it for 40 years. <laughs> Wow. Did that's a prescription a... come with that, Frank? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a good one. That's a good oh one. God. I like that. Anyway, I tell you, we have some cold weather. You might want to get your Valentine's an early earmuff or two. Uh-huh. I know. Tell you what, it's been foggy and misty today. It's really foggy down in Galveston, so watch for that. Temperatures 70, 68, 74 in Sugarland, 68 in Galveston. Talk about a warm Groundhog Day before the cold temperatures get here. Do you see what I see? 15 degrees right now in Amarillo, 23 in Lubbock, 39 in Dallas with wind chills of minus 4, 10, 30, 26, 7 up in Oklahoma City. Get ready. It's not going to be that cold for us, but it's going to be a big change. You can see already this is live radar. This isn't the future cast. This is what we're seeing already from Abilene up toward Wichita Falls about to move into the Dallas area. Winter storm warnings, warnings for wind chills of 15 below up in the panhandle, and winter weather advisories even for us. So here's why. Let's put the future cast in motion. This is as we go into the overnight. 5 a.m., we're still just seeing a cool down, but rain. Now, once we start getting into tomorrow, this is noon, College Station to Brenham, that's when we can start seeing an icy mix continuing our way into the Houston area in the late afternoon and early evening. It's not that impressive, but it's there, and we could see some glazing of bridges and overpasses because of it. This is one o'clock in the morning on Friday. We continue to see at least some wintry mix and maybe even a little snow at 6 a.m. on Friday, and it doesn't really get out of here until about noon on Friday. So with that in mind, there's a look at the winter weather advisory. This is 2 p.m. Thursday to 9 a.m. Friday, but honestly, the western counties, it starts at 6 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. So this is uh, for Grimes in the Brenham area, Washington County, off towards Sealy and Austin County and Colorado County. So you folks in the West, and we're just kind of drawing lines. We really just have to watch all day tomorrow, 2 p.m. for the Houston area, and then no real issues for coastal counties. But you know how these things go. We're just going to have to watch it carefully. So what to expect for temperatures is that we start out tomorrow in the mid 40s, but by Thursday afternoon, we're at 36. Friday morning, 28, a high of only 40 on Friday, maybe 38, 39 for most of us, if not colder. Saturday, we're at 30. Sunday, we're at 30, 48, 56. So we'll talk a lot more about all of this coming up at 4 o'clock. But I'll have specific lows for your area, on for especially for Friday. And wind chill temperatures, those are going to be in the teens and low 20s, really for a couple of days. And then we'll talk about how many hours below freezing. And it has been extended. So you gardeners especially need to know that. We'll have a lot more on it at 4 o'clock. Okay, we're going to see you in a bit, Frank. Thank you, sir. All right, look now at some of the other stories that we're covering this afternoon. We're going to go ahead and stick with the weather theme. We're working to find out what TxDOT and other local leaders are doing to make sure the roads stay safe and ice free in the coming days. A look at their plan of action and what you need to know. Plus, Mayor Sylvester Turner and HPD Chief Troy Finner announcing their plan to make a dent in the city's troubling crime rate. We'll take a look at what they want to do and how they hope to make it happen. Plus, more people are using melatonin to help them get a better night's rest, but a warning this afternoon about that, the harm you could be doing if you are not careful. So I know a lot of folks will be listening up for that one. Okay, my ears just perked up for sure, guys. Can't wait to see that story. We'll see you at 4 o'clock. Stay right. warm. Yes, and you guys too. Be careful out there. Looking ahead now to Valentine's Day, some might say wine and chocolate are the perfect way to complete a date for Valentine's Day. And in today's Wine Club Wednesday, we have a pairing that is so delicious and you will not believe how affordable it is. Joining me now for this romantic tasting, none other than my TV wife, Courtney Zavala. 
<laughs> my long lost friend. Oh my gosh. Listen, I have a million questions for you and we're going to catch up in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you about this wine. What do you say? Uh, funny because I have a giant pour. <laughs> I was just about to say that's smaller than your usual pour, so uh, it, it must I be know. COVID jail. Keep <laughs> keeping you sober. Well, listen, this is ten dollars, folks. It's the San Antonio Winery Cardinale Sweet Red. It's a proprietary blend from California's Riboli family. Courtney, they've been making wines for four generations, so all kinds of flavors: dark chocolate, cherry, blueberry jam. And here's why it's perfect to pair it with chocolate truffles. Uh, Kat Sorto, do you have my chocolate truffles, please? Oh, I think I have this yeah. nice tray here she's, she's putting on set for us. So, Courtney, this is a fun fact. I didn't realize this. When you eat sweets with red wines that are totally dry, it actually makes everything taste more bitter. The wine tastes more bitter. <laughs> Can you believe that? So that's why anytime you are pairing wine with sweeter foods, like a dessert for Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. you want just a hint, just a hint of sugar. So there you have it. These, uh, these truffles, by the way, these are $6.99. Again, the wine is $10, $10. And San Antonio Winery was awarded American Winery of the Year in 2020 by Wine Enthusiast Magazine. So there you have it. Makes the price point even more impressive. What do you think? Listen, I will tell you that I typically, and Derek, you know what kind of wines I like. We are not sweet wine people. We're not sweet people. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is true. <laughs> Maybe catch us on a good day Speak once for a yourself. month. We might be sweet, but I will tell you, this is, and I, I was a little apprehensive when I read the tasting notes. I thought, ooh, not gonna like it, not gonna like it. I have to tell you, I'm pleasantly surprised, and then, Having that information about pairing sweet with sweet, it, it is lovely. It is such a beautiful pairing together. I mean, Orlando didn't get the message. He's calling me. Hang on. I'm on TV, honey. Oh, okay. Girl. So um, <laughs> this is lovely. And what a beautiful gift. I mean, you're not spending yeah. a ton of money, but it, it, the bang is worth it. It is so, so good. These truffles are amazing. It would be and a this perfect is very good dessert. for you. Dark chocolate, red wine. Antioxidants, right? There you go. A little dessert, a little surprise, maybe before dinner. Also right now, the Valentine's Day promotion, Courtney, 10% off all sweet, sparkling rosé wines happening at HEB from February 2nd through the 15th. So. And cheers to Wine Club Wednesday. Tell them Derek and Courtney sent you. And in the meantime, Courtney, you look fantastic. You sound good. We can't wait to have you back at work. And I know a lot of viewers are wondering how you're doing. Listen, this has been the wildest ride. It all started on January 17th with Connor testing positive for COVID. AJ was shortly after that, and then I was the third victim. So um, on January 26th is when I tested positive. So I spent all last week and last weekend kind of battling the the cold and the runny nose and the cough. And so I'm, I feel so much better today and getting better every single day, but I'm Unfortunately, I'm still testing positive, so sticking with our work guidelines and want to be next to you without my mask on. So, and the rest of the people on the team, um, we're just we're hoping for a negative test tomorrow. I'd love to come back tomorrow and see you guys. I mean, it's just it's been so difficult. Um, I'm glad the boys have recovered, and you know, my hearts go out to every single other person who's battling this as well right now. I mean, it's just every single one of us in our house had completely different symptoms. Um, so it, it's just, you don't know until you know, as we like to say, but thankfully um, we're vaccinated and boosted. And I feel like that's what really shrunk the sickness. Um, but on day seven, I'm still testing positive. So we're hoping that that changes course very soon. Well, we hope so too, Courtney Savala. We miss having you around here. And every morning we are hoping that when you do your daily COVID <laughs> test, eventually you'll get that negative result. So cheers to you, my friend and my television wife. Enjoy cheers this sweet you. wine. If you like sweet wine, Courtney. If you we'll, like sweet we'll wine as much as we do. <laughs> okay. we I love you, Moody.
great show. I Thank you, you too, so babe. much. It was good to catch up with you and can't wait to do this in person. Good to see you. Hopefully that's sooner than later. We'll see you very soon. Also, back to our members, our viewers, wine club members, an easy way to join the Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB is to use your smartphone to scan the QR code that at some point will pop up on your screen. Once you use the photo app, there it is. It's right there. You'd click on the link that pops up, totally free to join. All you have to do is uh, enter your name and your email address. Then you'll have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of virtual tastings like the one Courtney and I just did. And as a reminder, you can find today's featured wine at your local HEB and the chocolate too. Good stuff. After the break, before her fate is sealed on tomorrow's season finale of Bravo's Project Runway, Houston designer Chastity Surreal, she's here in studio with us. She's joining us live to chat fashion and her incredible journey that took her all the way to New York Fashion Week in Bryant Park. We're gonna chat with her when Houston Life returns right after this. Just making it to the final four. I had a lot of Christians help along the way, and I'm so grateful. It's the last one. Um, I'm gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss stressing him out. 31 years old and already a star designer. That was a clip of designer Chastity Surreal on Bravo's hit show, Project Runway. Season 19 will come to an end as the winner is crowned on tomorrow night's finale, and it could be her. Chastity joins us now with more on this incredible journey. Chastity, it's great to see you in studio. Yes, it's great to be here. We love having you back, and you know, we were just reminiscing about the mall days. You and I first met back in 2017. Yes. Look how much you've grown yes. since that time. Yes, yes. Yes, growth is important, yeah. This moment is pivotal for you. How mm -hmm. are you feeling knowing that tomorrow night, America and the world will, will find out the results of this competition? It has been such an incredible journey, and I'm grateful for every, every milestone. So I'm really excited, anxious. I feel like I'm going to be at the edge of my seat with everybody else, even though I already know what happened. <laughs> and you were telling me when you watch the show, you're sort of reliving these stressful moments. Yes, it's in. The crazy thing is a lot of moments us designers aren't like in at the time and then we see it and like oh my gosh that happened to you like we're calling each other like oh my gosh I didn't know you were going through that so it's really cool it's really cool to watch it's got to be such a surreal experience for the viewers who maybe are unfamiliar talk about your beginnings because when you were was it 10 years ago you started watching videos on YouTube and that's essentially how you learned yes to become a designer yes yes I definitely started on YouTube, um, my mom bought me my first sewing machine, my first mannequin, and I just practiced and practiced until I got good at it. Um, I was a young mom, so uh, like school, couldn't go, but you know what? I was like, I'm just gonna keep going after my dreams. I'm gonna work hard, and now I'm here. Well, and we are so impressed with your talents. So the collection that you showed at Bryant Park, this is a 10-piece collection. Essentially, you got a bit of money, a few thousand bucks, mm -hmm. to create a 10-piece collection, and you had five months to do it? Yes. And how much of that five months did you really need to do all of this? All five. Every, like every <laughs> single hour of every day? Every single hour of every day. It's. It's really cool, especially back in the workroom, to see how other designers work. Um, I'm more of, like, my creative mind just goes and goes and goes, whereas other designers will make notes and have all of these thoughts, and yeah, I, I was just not like that. So I utilized all five months. I needed all five months. Down to the wire. Down and to the wire. We're seeing video with you and Christian Siriano, of course, Tommy Hilfiger, Nina Garcia. I know you have a lot of fans and mentors along the way. This is all happening tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Bravo. Finalists have, again, as we mentioned, a few thousand bucks, actually yes. 10,000 bucks yes. in five months yes. to create the collection. Yes. But the winning prize is what? $250,000? Yes, $250,000 and a mentorship with the CFDA, which is super important. We actually got to meet two of the CFDA members. Members, uh, on the finale episode um, before we were all announced to go and which was really incredible so it gave us a taste of what's to come and if you win that two hundred fifty thousand dollars how life-changing will that money be it would be super life-changing I could do so much with that money well 
whether you win the top spot or not, Chastity, you are a star in our eyes. We know you're going you. places. Thank Before you. we let you go, though, you yes. did bring some dresses for us to look at. A lot of people knew you early on mm. in your designing career as doing these beautiful, like almost like Disney dress mm -hmm. silhouettes, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start with the evening gown look. Yes. Uh, you've been kind enough to bring them to our studio. This evening gown is so beautiful. The black one on the left. Yes. Um, I am a lover of all things dark and Disney. Um, I love the villains and this is a very ethereal dress for me that is, that is adorned with full on beading and um, feathers at the bottom there and little peekaboo uh, pieces and a lot of lot of crystals in the shoulder area. It's so beautiful. A Thank black dress you. is a staple, right? And you've made it interesting and different. I yes. think it's gorgeous. Thank Let's you. talk about the next one. This is a, a wedding look. So this is more of sort of a uh, like a beige color. This, yes. this goes beyond off white. Yes. Um, a lot of my bridal clients actually do non-traditional colors. I have an occasional white every now and then, but I have done, I think last year, three black bridal gowns, and I really love this um, gown here. I love the 3D of the florals. You can see her getting married in a garden with the tulle skirt. This is one of my favorite pieces that I've made. For it's, sure. it's, it's beautiful. If Lauren Kelly's in the house, uh, you know she's getting married soon. She'll have her <laughs> eyes on that. And before we let you go, the last one, this is a prom gown, yes. and this is from your latest mini capsule collection. Yes, yes. Um, this is the London gown, and she's also available on my website currently. It's a full-on purple iridescent sequin gown adorned with chains from the shoulders, cutouts in the waist and hip area that's adorned with crystals of different sizes and it just goes down into a form-fitting silhouette and has a beautiful train. It's beautiful. I Thank love the you. color. It's it's fun and whimsical. Chastity Surreal from Humble High School all the way to the finale <laughs> on the Project Runway stage. We are rooting for you every step of the way. Thank As a reminder, you. the Project Runway finale airs tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Bravo. For a link to keep up with Chastity, head, head to our website, HoustonLife.tv and click the scene on Houston Life. Life section. Chastity, best of luck. We'll be rooting for you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. We are too. We'll see you again <laughs> very soon. Now let's check back in with Lauren Kelly, who has a tasty event for all of us. Hi, Lauren. Don't let Chastity leave. I haven't found a wedding gown yet, and I want to try that one on, all right? So coming up next, we're going to talk all about tapas on the trails happening at the Houston Arboretum next weekend, and some of the tapas that are going to be available to our guests. We're getting into the food when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to Houston Life. If you're looking for something to do besides go to a restaurant for Valentine's Day weekend, next weekend here at the Houston Arboretum, Tapas on the Trails. It's one of their most popular events. It's happening Saturday from 5 to 9 p.m. And not only do you get to have a couple of beverages and walk the beautifully lit trails at dusk, you also get to have some delicious Mediterranean style tapas along the trails. And here to talk more about it is Chef Wade Schindler with Cotton Culinary. Now, you've impressed me thank with you, just you the lineup of, of this so far when we're talking about Mediterranean food what does that mean what does that encompass so this is just the beginning of uh, a five course menu that we're going to be offering so uh, we're going to start off with we have a fried artichoke bottom that will be uh, I'm sorry a fried artichoke, fried artichoke bottom, bottom. saute with fresh garlic shallots white wine heavy cream stuffed inside of a Deep fried artichoke bottom. Who doesn't like that? that we're all from like Texas. That sounds like a well, meal. We're all from Texas, so this is not your normal Mediterranean, I might add. Okay, so it's okay. a little bit of little Texas flares. I love. Can I taste it? Well. I'm going to taste this one. Of course. Okay. All so, right. So while I'm tasting this, you're going to make one of the other traditional. So right here, I'm going to make the salad that we're introducing that evening. So we're going to have oh my God. a couple of. Oh, you need a little napkin right there. Oh no, I'm just going to smear it all over my face. There oh, you go. We'll do a little so bit of that. <laughs> so um, for our oh, salad God. course, we're going to do a couple of. Microgreens, okay. right down in the center. We're gonna take some tabbouleh. Okay. Now that is your classic, classic tabbouleh. Dish, yes, right? yes. So we're gonna toss a little bit of that in there. Some fine, right? Little and pear also tomatoes. And also, I want to say with the courses, if you're really not into any of these things, there's also a completely vegetarian. Yes. Dish also, as well. along with this, will be a vegetarian uh, okay. option for a lot of them that okay. are not vegetarian already. Okay. And then from there, um, there's some you know, meatless meatless items, okay. a little extra virgin olive oil, 
We'll give it a little tossy toss. Okay, tossy toss it up. Uh -huh, and then it's just going to go. <laughs> but, Chef, I, I want to just mention before we run out of time here, the very last thing that we're going to talk about today is the sorbet palate cleanser. Oh, yes, the sorbet palate cleanser is the best. Okay, so okay. It we've is, got the tabbouleh, we've is got a, that. And uh, if you guys want your tickets to Top Us on the Trails, you got to get them before they go. HoustonLife.tv for more information. Shep, thank you so much. This looks amazing. Do you happen to have a, a spoon or a fork? I can. I sure oh, do. Wait, right here. Look, that's amazing. All right, so Derek, I'm going to enjoy some of this, and I will try to take some back to the studio a little bit later on. But I definitely suggest you guys get some tickets for this. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, Lauren, it looks great. And that's a pro tip with the utensils right there in the sleeve. Oh, Lauren, yeah, I'll be ready to it. go. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, crafting for Valentine's Day with two easy DIY projects. Then it's game time as we head to the field with the Houston Sabercats, Houston's own professional rugby team. Okay, looking forward to that. They are so good. They put me to work. <laughs> Men in short shorts. All right, thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, let's hand it off to Keith and Christine in Studio A. Hey there, guys. Always good to see you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, happy uh, hump day it is, isn't wine it? Wine Club Wednesday. Enjoy your wine, you guys, we and we'll go. see you tomorrow. Okay.